Yeah, I mean, if you could just give us the the, I mean, how I mean, how did you make that decision? How did you find that opportunity? What so, made you, so what made you decide to go for? It? Look for ex-military guys, right? Um, so I got out of the Marines. We moved back to Nashville, Tennessee. There's there's two big prisons in Nashville. One is a privately owned medium security prison called CCA. They've got CCAs all over the current the country, and the other one is a maximum security called Riverbend. And um, I went and I, I found, I don't know, um, monster.com or whatever job site I was on at that point in time, put my application in, got called into both, did, uh, did interviews and got uh, job offers from both. The medium security prison was offering more money. So I was like, well, shit, I'm, I'm gonna go do that. That sounds like it's gonna be a lot easier. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life. Maximum security, them boys stay locked up 24 seven pretty much. And you ain't got to deal with them. Medium security, you roll up in a pod, it's you and one other correctional officer. All you've got is a walkie talkie on your hip. And there's like 150 of these cats that come out and roam freely throughout the pod during certain hours of the day. So it is just mass chaos. And so immediately being an ex Marine, I get put on to uh, one of the teams there that does extractions and, you know, if, if somebody's acting disorderly, this team, QRF, if you want to call it that, gets called in. And so, like, the second week that I'm there, they call us up and they're like, hey, we've got a guy that's in solitary that is not coming out of his cell. We got to go extract him. So we go down to solitary and they're big, you know, probably – seven foot by four foot metal doors and they've got a six inch window that you can see through. Well, this guy had covered up the window with cardboard. Well, how do you stick cardboard to a window? With your own fecal matter. So that's what he had used. We pop the door, we look inside there. He's butt naked, had covered himself in his own shit. Their shit smeared all over the walls. We slam the door back, <laughs> back shut and we're like, all right, we got to think about this. So, we end up going back to the locker room. We suit up, got a guy in the front with a shield, and then the rest of us have gas masks on. We go back there, pop the door. Everybody has an assignment as you roll up into a cell. You know, one guy's got the shield. The next guy behind him has the left arm. Another guy's got the left leg. Another guy's got the right leg. Another guy has the right arm. So everybody's, you know, has an assignment, get in there and take control. And we did it and, uh, and, and, and yanked this dude up out of his cell. But... I mean, it's just stuff like that. You see stuff like that on a daily basis. It's a whole nother world when you're inside of a prison, right? All they know is what's in those four walls. And uh, it, it, I'm really glad I did it, but the guys that do that for a career for 20, 30 years, hey, more respect to them, I could never do it. <laughs>